One day you're playing a double-headed soccer game. The next day you're in the hospital with doctors taking blood from you and come back and say you have cancer. I have nightmares about it, I mean. I have nightmares. And my biggest fear is that if I possibly don't make it, how my family members are gonna treat it. I'm mostly worried about my sister. Is it gonna go away or is it gonna keep coming and coming? And if it keeps coming and coming, I don't know what would happen. I do wanna fight it, but I just don't want me to die. I just wanna stay alive. I wanna live to be at least 30. I was almost gonna cry and it hurted a little it hurted a lot. Don't want to get some yucky medicine. I woke up one morning and my cheeks looked so big and my lips were swollen. My mom called, said I looked like Angelina Jolie. The scariest part about having cancer is that you're worried that you might get sicker and sicker. My doctors always kind of kid around with me, and but when they have to get like serious, I get really scared, so I usually ask them to leave the room. <laughs> so I don't really know what they talk about. I get angry with myself, I get angry with others, the doctors. After Kaylee's chemo and steroids, she just like crazy and cranky and she needs to have everything her way and it's just a totally different person. And it's, it's crazy. Bald is beautiful, but cancer is not. When I lost my hair, people made jokes about me. They used to call me um, bald-headed Blake. I don't like that. When I went to school, people People came to me and asked why you were bald, and they said that I looked like a boy, which I don't like. Childhood cancer is the biggest bully out there, and you know we need to stand up to bullies. This is a picture of my brother Andrew. It was the night before he went to septic shock, and then every like thing from there just kind of went downhill, and then it just everything just kind of ended. And I know that my sister went through a lot of a lot of stress and hurting, and she hated it. She just wanted to escape. In the middle of the night, one night, my parents woke me up and told me that Jacob died. And the first words that I said from there was, "But I don't want him to die. It was too much for me to process." But when I first came in, their um their face was kind of red, and that says. They were crying, so I'm like, okay, why, well, why on earth will you be crying? She's just sleeping, you know? I think I tried to open her eye a little bit, but it just, but it just closed again, you know? And then I tried moving her around, and then that's when I found out she was really dead. He was a fighter, and he battled for 11 months, and he was just a tough little boy. I'm so used to like sharing stuff with him because he's my twin and stuff. But it'll be hard because I'm so used to sharing a birthday with somebody and now I'm not gonna and it's gonna feel weird. Sometimes it'll hit me that I have now two types of cancer and there's nothing really to control it anymore and I'll just cry. But it, right now, I mean, I'm just gonna do all the things I've ever wanted to do and just live while I can. I mean, the doctors didn't say you're going to die tomorrow. I mean, I'm not going to die tomorrow. Well, you don't know that, but live every moment like it's your last one. I want to grow up and be somebody, be an adult, pass away my, my grandkids sitting next to me. I want to live because someday I might make it to the Olympic gymnastics, and I really want to represent the USA. I want to live, breathe the air into my veins